It's winter time, and I thought today we could make a winter painting, a cabin in the snow. We'll be creating some snow, and you'll be able to download some free snow brushes. This is going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is episode 45 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. Now, we're going to be using Photoshop as well. You're going to be able to download some free snow brushes because we're going to add some really cool snow to this image after we turn it into a painting first. I think this image needs a little crop, make it a little more intimate. Let me grab my crop tool. I think I'm just going to pull down from the top a little bit and pull the left side into maybe about here and maybe the right side. Let's pull it into maybe this point right here and let's pull up from the bottom a little bit. Yeah, we don't need all that snow down there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. I'm gonna leave this delete crop pixels ticked on here so it'll get rid of the crop pixels and go ahead and accept this. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. There's some power lines here we can get rid of. I don't know if they'll hurt it, but we'll get rid of them. And I don't like this little hill back here. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get my uh, spot healing tool. I'm just typing J for the shortcut for that and make myself a big brush. And I'm just gonna paint this away here and see what kind of result I get. Pretty good, it, there's a, it's a little messed up here. So I'll just give it a couple little taps in here just to clean it up. Now it's gonna turn into a painting and I think that looks fine. Now, for these power lines over here, I'm gonna make my brush smaller. And what I'll do is I'll start on this edge of the power line, I'll give it one tap with the left side of my mouse, like a one left mouse click. Click here, hold your shift key down and come to the other end. Hope you can see my cursor. It doesn't show up and I can't make it look any better. Shift click and it gets it. Click once here and come to the other side and shift click. And I think that gets rid of the power lines. And if you have any uh, little residue here, you can clean it up with your spot healing tool. That spot healing tool is very forgiving and very useful. Next, I'm going to send this into Topaz Studio 2. But you see this tree right here in the edge. It kind of bugs me. So I'm going to grab my crop tool again and just pull in a little bit and get rid of that tree. And click the check mark here. And I think that's going to look better. That was going to bug me. So now we can go ahead and duplicate this background layer. I'm just doing a command or control J to duplicate the background layer. My Photoshop menus have been nicely color coded to find things very easily. If you haven't watched my previous tutorial, I show you how to color code your label. So go back and watch that if you haven't. Now let's launch Topaz Studio 2. It's right here in red and green. Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to click this and it launches Topaz Studio 2. And this is gonna be real simple. I'm kind of working on a technique that I've been developing, and that is I'm gonna come here to Add Filter. I'm gonna remove some uh, detail from this image, and I'm gonna use something kind of unusual for that, the Precision Detail Filter. Now, normally you think of that to add detail, but you can remove detail with it very nicely, and you can get some really nice painterly effects with it. So I'm gonna take the small detail here. I'm just working with overall today. So small detail, I'm gonna drag this to the left and as I do you can see I'm removing a lot of that really small detail in there then I'm going to go to the overall medium detail and start to pull this back and can you see that detail just starting to drain out of the image it's already getting a nice painterly type quality to it and now let's play with the large detail and let's pull that back that even gets more painterly so just try to find a spot that looks great to you and I think that looks good now I don't like the cabin here but what I'm going to do is uh, bring that detail back in the cabin by coming up to this precision detail layer right here and clicking on this icon here which will add a layer mask to it i'm going to get a brush tool i'm painting with black transparency here i have my edge aware turned on and i'm just going to use this brush i have and i'm just going to paint the detail back into this cabin just like so and the detail is back and I think I'm going to also make my brush bigger and I'm going to paint the detail back in the snow. Now there's not much detail in that snow, but I want it back. There are some shadows in there and they'll show up later on, I believe. But see them, you can see some detail in there. I'm going to leave that in there. Can you take a guess of what filter I'm going to use next in this creative toolbox? Hmm. Let's go to add filter 
And if you're thinking impression, you are 100% correct. But today I'm not going to do much with this filter. I'm just going to click on impression. And already it looks really super nice in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the number of strokes. I think, you know, we can go high strokes and it'll show up more detail here. And that's kind of cool and play with it and whatever you like is the one you want to use but here's medium which looks good but let's try low i like low it makes it even more painterly and that's all i'm going to do there but what i'm going to do is come up to precision detail right click on this mask and click copy mask and then i'm going to come up to this impression mask icon and right click it here and i'm going to say paste the mask Okay, and so now you can see I got my detail back in my cabin and I have a really nice painterly background. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Follow this step closely. You see right here in this uh, masking section here, there's a bunch of different tools in here and you see this one called adjust. Click on this. Now, if you take the density, see right now the mask is black, just taking the painterly effect off everything. Now, if I take this density and start to drag it to the white, right to the white <laughs> to the right it'll start to turn gray and you can see it's adding some of that painterly effect back now i can keep dragging this to a point where i think i want to take some of the detail out but not all of it because i want to maintain a painterly look but i'm thinking maybe right like that looks pretty good so i'm still maintaining some of the original detail but i have some painterly over top of it and that is honestly all i want to do here but if you left click anywhere in this canvas area on the image itself or off to the side of the image left click and hold you can see here's the before and here's the after pretty cool right but where do you see it after we get it back in photoshop and we add some snow to it but before i do that i'm going to pull this density back a little bit i want to just bring a little more detail back in that cabin just a little bit yeah i think like that i'm pretty happy with that again here's the before and here's the after yeah, so I removed some of the detail, but I do want some of that detail in there. I think it'll look nice. All we need to do now is click accept and that sends us right back into Photoshop and here we are. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can really see it here. We're going to be adding some snow, but I think I want a little more contrast in here and I'm going to simply grab a uh, levels adjustment layer. And what I'll do is take the uh, shadow side and just start to drag it in a little bit. See how the contrast starts to come in a little bit and I'll bring the right side the highlight side in a little bit and it just adds a little more detail and then we can work on the midtones and kind of balance out the image something like that and now I hope you can see this but I can still see some shadows in my snow here it's a nice soft quiet scene and I really like it let me just see am I happy with that I might just lighten that up just a wee bit and I think that looks good so here's before levels and here's after and if you felt you went too far you can take this overall opacity and start to drag it back if you want to if you felt you went a little bit too far and I'm maybe I'll come back to now nah, I'm leaving up at 100% I think it looks good next we're gonna add some snow now, I've provided a link in the description below this video where you can get these uh, brushes from this company called Brush Easy. These brushes are going to be free for you, and you can purchase brushes and things off them if you like. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but we're using their free brushes, and I want to give them a little shout out. After you download the brushes, they're going to probably be in a file called Zip or something like that. I'm on a Mac, and mine's called Zip. I just double-click this, and then the brushes are inside. You can have Photoshop opened up. All you have to do is double click on the brushes and it will load the brushes into Photoshop. And next, make sure you're working with your brush tool. Click on that brush tool icon in your tool palette and then just come up to your brush preset picker, open it up and inside here live all your brushes. And then just scroll to the bottom and you'll find your free snow Photoshop brushes. Open up this folder and inside here live those brushes. Now we're going to be using brush number nine and brush number 11. Before we use this brush, let's come over and add a new blank pixel layer. You see that layer two right there? It's a blank pixel layer because I don't wanna work on the actual image itself. So we're gonna work on a blank pixel layer. Now let's come up and open up the brushes and we're gonna start out with brush number nine, okay? And let me make my brush a little smaller and you'll be able to actually see what this brush looks like. See it right there? Now I'm just gonna go ahead and, well make sure you have white paint, okay? 
So use a white, white paint brush and just give it a click. And there's your snow. You see that? And then we can come over here and click it. And maybe we'll click it one more time in here. And that looks really good. Now some places the snow's overlapping and that's okay. So now what I want to do is get my spot healing brush and that's just uh, J for the spot healing brush. And if you see any places where there's a, a line where, the, where these two cross, you can just use your healing tool and clean that up. Okay, like so. And take your time and look for all those areas. I have uh, sample all layers checked. That's kind of important here when you're doing this. And we'll just clean this up. But it's no big deal. We're Photoshop editors. We do this stuff all the time. This is part of our job description. So just clean up these little lines where these two brushes have crossed. I think that looks good, but I don't think I want this same type of snow in the building. I like it on these background trees, and I don't think I want any snow in the snow foreground here. So I'm going to remove it. And to do that, I'm going to add a layer mask onto this layer too by clicking this icon right here. Now, I'm going to make sure I have black paint. Now, I still have that snow brush loaded. Right now, um, I got my move tool up here. But if I come and type B for my brush tool, I still have that uh, snow brush you see right there. I don't want to use that. So I'm going to come back and let's go ahead and come up to my general brushes and get my soft round brush. Okay, that's all I want to use for this. And I'm going to adjust the size of my brush. It has a nice feathered edge on it. And I'll get a brush about that size. And what I want to do is with black paint, just remove it from the building here. If a couple straggling snowflakes lay behind, that's fine. Not a big deal. And I want to get it off of the foreground or the snow in the foreground, I should say. And I'll make my brush a little smaller and remove some of that snow off of the snow on the roof. Next, I want to add a little bit of different snow in front of the cabin. And let's go ahead and get another blank pixel layer, work on an individual layer. And let's go back to our brushes. And this time I want to use a different brush. We're going to use brush number 11 for the building. Then adjust your brush size accordingly and make sure you have white paint because it's snow and just click one time left click with your mouse. Now there has been snow scattered out around the building and underneath the building and we're going to fix that. So to do that what I want to do is just add a black layer mask and to do that you can hold the option key down and click on the layer mask icon here. It puts a black hide all layer mask on there and then all we need to do is get a white brush. So I'm going to type B to get my brush. Now my snow brush is still active so we need to change that. We don't want to use the snow brush so come back up to your general brushes and just grab your soft round brush. And right now we're painting with black paint. I'm going to type X. So I flop that over to white paint. And by the way, if you ever want black and white paint, just type D. That is the shortcut for the default colors of black and white. And now with my brush here, I'm going to get a decent size here and just paint those snowflakes on the building. Just like so. I'm just revealing them through that black mask. All right. Now, there's a couple flakes here I don't like, like this flake right here. So I'm just going to type X and get the opposite color, which is black. And I'm just going to remove that flake right there and this flake as well. And that is it. So here is before the snowflakes in the building and here's after. And I just think that just marries the whole image together. All right, and we started out looking like this. I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key down on my keyboard and click the background layer. We started out with this image, and now we end up with this image. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you give it a try. Don't forget, you can download the brushes, and you can download the image and follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, Happy editing.